This is the Jamaica Information Service, the, the voice, voice of Jamaica. Jamaica. You're inside Jamaica Magazine. Encouraging the information flow, sharing the news and views you need to know. We are building an informed Jamaica every day. Listening, Listening to, to what, what you say. say. It's Wednesday, December 2. Thanks so much for your company on this midweek edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Alison Watson. Starting today, the Wednesday Magazine will put the spotlight on the work of the Urban Development Corporation. But first, nurses and government sign a new wage agreement. Labor Ministry and Immigration Agency team up to monitor the movement of foreign workers into the island. Government recommits to safeguarding the rights of workers infected with HIV AIDS. Do stay with us. Those stories and more after this break. I might stand on the corner, but my love life. I know wrong from right. So don't judge me how my look. I stand up for peace. And if we stand up for peace, peace must increase. And now the news. Minister of Health Rudyard Spencer says the nurses should be getting money due to them under a new wage contract this month. The minister was speaking at yesterday's signing of the agreement with the Nurses Association of Jamaica, the NAJ. He says a team from the ministry will be meeting with the finance minister soon to discuss the implementation of the new wage package. We are therefore in that meeting going to impress upon him the importance of meeting the payment for Christmas. And hopefully by weekend or next week, we'll be able to announce that payments will be made. The nurses had submitted a 42-point claim and reached an agreement on 35 of those claim points. President of the NAJ, Edith Orwood Anderson, thanked all who supported the NAJ in its negotiations. She indicated that the agreement does not truly represent what nurses wanted, but says they are willing to move forward at this point. We took the contract to our members and our members have ratified the position per constitution that at this time they will take a cautious agreement it's a pause a worthwhile pause in christmas the new agreement will cover the two-year period, April 2008 to March 2010. The nurses are to receive over $430 million in additional salaries and allowances. This represents a 15% increase, the same given to other public sector workers under government's third memorandum of understanding with trade unions. The NAJ negotiated outside the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions and was therefore not a part of MOU3. Minister of Labor and Social Security, Pranel Charles says the settlement represents a compromise between the government and the nurses. Jamaica cannot pay the nurses what they deserve. Not the government. The government can write down anything on people. The government can pay anything you ask them to. The country cannot afford it. The people of Jamaica cannot afford to pay the nurses for the sacrifice they are making on behalf of all of us. And therefore, we must recognize those who are making the sacrifice and say thanks to them. Two government agencies have signed on to ensure that persons do not enter and work in the country without the proper approvals and documentation. While the Ministry of Labor is responsible for issuing work permits, potential foreign workers still have to get a visa from the Passport, Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA. CEO of PICA, Jennifer McDonald, says often persons will try to play off one agency against another. To negate this, the Ministry and PICA signed a memorandum of 
understanding yesterday to share information in their databases. It really shows seamless operations between ourselves and the Ministry of Labor and Social Security and really represents joined up government, which is what we are working towards. We have assigned someone in our unit, in our agency, to deal specifically with work permit matters, right? And so we are hoping that we are able to serve the applicant in a seamless way and we are able to, 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 to catch those persons who would not, who may perhaps pose a threat to our security. The MOU was signed by Mrs. MacDonald and the Ministry's Permanent Secretary, Alvin McIntosh. It was witnessed by the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Pernell Charles. <laughs> Government remains committed to safeguarding the rights of employees infected with HIV-AIDS. Minister of Labor and Social Security, Pernell Charles, is to expedite discussions on the draft HIV-AIDS workplace policy. This results from a directive by Prime Minister Bruce Golding. It is so important to ensure that all of the stakeholders are on board, that whatever concerns that may exist in relation to the efficacy, efficaciousness of the policy, whatever reservations may exist as to whether the policy is bold enough um, to ensure that all of those are properly addressed. The draft HIV-AIDS workplace policy is being reviewed by a joint select committee of parliament, which is chaired by Minister Charles. A policy has also been developed to fight discrimination against students living with the disease. Mr. Golding says he will be speaking to Education Minister Andrew Holness to ensure that the policy is being upheld in schools. <laughs> In the meantime, the heads of all agencies operating under the office of the Prime Minister have signed a commitment to support public sector workers with HIV-AIDS. Prime Minister Bruce Golding witnessed the reconfirmation in a World AIDS Day signing ceremony. He is urging the agencies to now put this commitment into practice. We have to make sure that we practice what we preach. We have to make sure that we live what we proclaim. And it is not enough simply to identify the don'ts and to make sure that we stay on the right side of the don'ts. The Prime Minister, meanwhile, says an extensive public education campaign and sensitization program is also needed. He says this is critical if the country is to eliminate the misconceptions and phobias associated with the illness. We kill people who are infected with HIV every day by the way we treat them, by the extent to which they are ostracized, they are outcasted, they are isolated, they are made to feel as if something wrong with them. And therefore, life for that kind of person um, is nasty, is difficult, is brutish, and maybe not short because the treatment is available. The Jamaica Information Service was among the agencies that signed the agreement yesterday. The Institute of Sports, National Gallery, Cabinet Office and Creative Production and Training Center, CPTC, also inked the document. <laughs> The company's office of Jamaica, the COJ, has extended the amnesty for some entities to file outstanding returns at reduced costs. The original deadline was November 30, but that has been pushed back to February of 2010. Agencies that benefit from the amnesty include churches, charitable organizations, service clubs, professional associations, and community-based organizations. CEO of the company's office, Judith Ramgalam, says the COJ's decision was based on the low turnout during the initial amnesty period. Charitable groups have also made numerous requests for more time. J. Ray and Nephew says the fire at its Spanish Town Road plant will not affect distribution for the Christmas season. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, the NSWMA, was quick on the scene last evening to help contain the fire which engulfed one of the warehouses. Executive Director of the NSWMA, Joan Gordon Webley, told JIS TV that the authority was more than willing to assist. After all, we are on the same road to the landfill and we can always call upon them at any time to give us water when we are in need. So we felt we had to and we are happy to be in a position.